Hey guys, it's Maddie, and today we are back with a brand new episode of Trucks of War. Continuing on after our Trucks of the Vietnam War video, today we are diving into the trucks of the Gulf War Desert Storm. But before we get started, this video was made possible by our online chrome shop, jackschromeshop.com. Be sure to stop by the site and sweep through our selection of sales, including 10% off bumpers, visors, exhaust, steering wheels, and so much more. And remember folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. At the dawn of the new decade in early August of 1990, following five months of lead-up under the preliminary Operation Desert Shield phase, the Gulf War gave way when the combat phase, codename Operation Desert Storm, waged an attack against Iraq in response to the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait due to the ongoing oil pricing and production disputes. After teaming together with Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher to send troops to Saudi Arabia, President George H.W. Bush began encouraging other countries to do the same, eventually evolving into the largest military alliance ever since World War II. The Gulf War also marked the launch of live news broadcasts from the front lines of the battle, earning the notable Video Game War nickname due to the daily images broadcast from cameras aboard U.S. bombers. Despite starting some 15 years after the Vietnam War, many military models would make yet another appearance in the Great Gulf War as well. If you'll recall from our Trucks of the Vietnam War video, the historic high-mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, or Humvee for short, that eventually evolved from the beloved Jeeps towards the end of the war with Vietnam, would make many more appearances as the main military model used moving forward. Primarily produced by a company called AM General, located in South Bend, Indiana, only a hop, skip, and a jump away from our home here at Jack's Chrome, more than 72,000 of these models were made and shipped overseas to both U.S. and foreign militaries. This top tactical truck although primarily designed for personnel and light cargo carrying behind the front lines, proved to be a pretty vicious fighting vehicle that saw widespread use in the Gulf War navigating treacherous desert terrain. The Humvee's hard-headed abilities to take on daunting trucking tasks in the dry desert heat inspired an all-new civilian Hummer version to be created in 1992, based on none other than the magnificent M998 model. Speaking of other major military models, you might recall the renowned M35 2.5 ton 6x6 deuce and a half cargo trucks from fights dating all the way back to as early as 1944. The most used M35 model by the military in the Gulf War was the M35A2 which also served as a basis used for several of the gun trucks we talked about in our Vietnam video. Additionally, going back to AM General, the company also produced another 6x6 truck, this time a 5-ton M939 heavy-duty model made for the U.S. military to haul heavier loads of over 10,000 pounds. The Gulf War and Operation Desert Storm also opened up an opportunity for an all-new fast attack vehicle to be adopted with the quarter-ton 4x4 M151 model. These M151 models were also made by AM General, as well as other companies like Ford, as a successor to the M38 Jeeps, but were built with improved integrated frames. The main M151 model used was the M151A2, a fast attack vehicle variant designed to be held within a specialized heavy lift CH-53 helicopter. Other fast attack vehicles or FAVs fought in the Desert Storm fight, also known as Desert Patrol Vehicles or DPVs. These Desert Patrol Vehicles were lightly armored, high-speed sand rail-like vehicles 
that debuted in combat for the first time during the Gulf War. And due to their dash speed and outstanding off-road abilities, were utilized extensively over the course of Operation Desert Storm. In fact, the first U.S. forces to enter Kuwait City during Desert Storm were Navy SEALs in DPVs. In addition to many all-newly adopted tactical military truck models, tons of tanks were also added to the long lineup of vehicles that would ultimately lead the U.S. to victory. The most popularly produced makes and models included infantry fighting vehicles, or IFVs, like the M2A2 Bradley, cavalry fighting vehicles like the M3 Bradley, main battle tanks such as the M1 Abrams series, and a variety of other armored vehicles. Bradley also brought in a rather interesting rig called the M270 Multiple Launch Rocket System, or MLRS, that looked like a cross between a tank truck and a shipping container, which was strapped to a total of 12 rockets that spread what the Iraqi soldiers supposedly referred to as steel rain. Also, as an abundance of aerial attacks occurred, especially earlier on towards the beginning of the battle, an array of aircrafts, including helicopters like the Boeing AH-64A Apache and the Sikorsky UH-60A Blackhawk, were brought to the battle. Anti-aircrafts like the Model M48 Chaparral, self-propelled surface-to-air missile launcher, as well as the M1097 Avenger version of the Humvee were also used. In addition to aerial attacks, an array of Advanced Assault Amphibious Vehicles, or AAV-7 series, saw successful use during the liberation of Kuwait and subsequent destruction of the Iraqi army. The fight finally ended on February 28th of 1991, only five weeks after Operation Desert Storm opened up. Moving ahead to March 10th, 540,000 U.S. troops began moving out of the Gulf, taking the tried-and-true tactical trucks and their tails with them. In fact, many of the more timeless military models, such as the historic Humvee, would continue to carry the military as one of their top-tier trucks for many years and conflicts to come. Additionally, many all-new model adaptations would make their way onto the military market, including a vast variety of improved Bradley's M3 vehicles and several other updated versions of the most popularly produced military makes and models. Thank you all so much for watching our Trucks of the Gulf War Desert Storm video. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 25k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home with some sweet stainless sails on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.